Let's do a little bit of a little bit of reactification here, shall we? Let, let's see what the news is, boys. Here we go. And by the way, this is everything you need to know about the War Within from the WoWcast on the World of Warcraft channel. So if you guys want to check this out, that's where it is. Take a little look. See what's going on in the War Within. Hello, Linksy. And welcome to WoWcast. Today we're going to talk about the War Within, which alpha starts soon. I have two special soon. guests with me today. Please introduce yourselves. Excited for that. Hi, I'm Ian, game director Ian. on WoW. I'm Tina, associate art director on hey, WoW. Hey, Tina. Good. Oh, so associate much. art director. Oh, my gosh. They always... Always kill it with the art and wow. For joining me today, before we talk about Alpha, Let's see what, we got. what can you summarize about The War Within? Ian? Well, so The War Within, I mean, of course, it is the 10th expansion Thanks, guys. to well-known video game World of Warcraft. <laughs> well-known video even, game. Even, I think, more special Legendary. to us, Tenth expansion it's the too, beginning wow. of the World Soul Saga. It's the beginning of probably the most ambitious story we've ever tried to tell in WoW. Wow. Uh, that's, so as that's, you know, that's all big. expansions do, it kicks off with a journey to a new place. But really, this is going to be beginning to set the stage and establish the stakes for a conflict that threatens not just, you know, ourselves and, and our families and those we hold dear, but the very world that we call home, the very world beneath our feet that's been wow. home to all of our adventures. Chris Metzen at BlizzCon, when he when he's like, he took a break, he came back, he had been cooking. I said this at, at, at BlizzCon too, he has been cooking. He's like, bros, I got like <laughs> six expansions to plan out. Let's go to work. That's so cool. And if we don't win this one, nothing else matters. <laughs> so this character Toast. has been everywhere for the War Within. Zelatath. She's purple. She's amazing. Can you tell yeah. us more about her? Yeah, Zalatath is, uh, you know, one of our key villains of the World Soul Saga. The expansion is, I mean, part of it is this journey, uh, delving deeper, find Zalatath and her allies. And uh, the mm. inspiration uh, for her design from an art side was really based on the uh, priest artifact weapon. That I think this is a character that Jenny's really going to like. She plays Shadow Priest and stuff. And more 10, 12 minute vids would be cool. Like, what kind of videos did you like? This is not going to be a short video right here. We're going to post this React on YouTube, but it's not going to be a short video. Yeah, like excited stuff going on. There's so much going on in WoW. It's crazy. It's crazy. I'm trying to keep up. She had been trapped in for so long. So if you look at her armor, like all the motifs, of, you like know, all her the belt, tattoos her and stuff, shoulders, that's really pretty cool. Inspiration from that uh, design. Uh, even the runes on her cheeks, mm -hmm. uh, those are a homage to Nizoth, who freed her oh. from the dagger. Cool. Nice okay. <laughs> if later on in War Within you find yeah. yourself, you know, wiping to a raid somewhere, just blame the Shadow Priests for not just putting the knife down, yeah, why walk away from that? the talking dagger, and oh we wouldn't God. be here. Oh my and yet, God. here we uh, are. Are there any other familiar... Always blame the Shadow Priests. I like that, Ian. That's good. Yeah, yeah Jenny has... She's not been playing a lot of WoW recently, but uh, when she does play, uh, she likes to play Shadow Priest is one of the classes that she plays. She plays a lot of Dot Casters. She's a Dot Caster player, like Fire Mage, Boomkin, that kind of thing. Faces that we can recognize? Uh, yeah, some of the key uh, heroes of our story are hey. uh, Illyria and Erwin. So Great. these two, they've... I oh, mean, she's looking all updated. They're, they're running a bit, right, from some of the wounds of their He's past. He's looking super updated. But in the one. end, they're going to find hope and redemption. So, you know, Illyria, we've seen her uh, new design. That oh, really wow. The duality of her character. That's kind of cool. Uh, we saw him and our shadow cinematic, mode? and he just looks, you know, a little more haggard. He does. Look at him now. Holy moly. Just, just leveling these guys up a little bit, huh? That's cool. He's, he's been through a lot lately. I like his here. armor. <laughs> he's yes. working on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the name The War Within is one that good. has a couple of layers to it. Right? Obviously, we're literally delving beneath the surface of Azeroth and going to be battling within our world. Literal delve but content. But this is also I like a delve story DOE. that involves a lot of inner turmoil and inner conflict. And Anduin is probably the most torn of any of our, our cast of heroes, oh, wow. given what he went through in the Shadowlands. And his journey into the darkness as he seeks to rediscover his own light is a big part of the narrative arc. I was playing a lot of Lost Ark during the end of Shadowlands, so I didn't really keep up with all that. But I do like that Shalomane, baby. And with the War Within, there's new zones. Can we talk about what our new zones are going to be? The hmm. continent as a whole that begins on the surface and extends to the The new zones look awesome at BlizzCon. We're calling Khazalgar. This mm -hmm. is an ancient home to the Earthen. It's actually just off the west coast of Pandaria, about between Pandaria oh. and Kalimdor. Cool. 
you know, just a, you know, a couple hundred nautical miles away from a certain sword that's sticking oh. out of the southern end of Kalimdor. But yes, home to four zones um, with amazing varied settings. That looks so pretty. Yeah, uh, so our first Love zone, uh, the Isle of Dorne. This is basically, you'll find an isolated group of earthen there. And so they have their awesome Yo. city, Dornegal, which we're very excited to, for players to check out. That'll be the hub in the end. That's cool. I love those big blue skies. That just makes me happy to look at. Uh, we were playing some from Arc Age, and I felt like the, the way that they created the lighting in that game was actually awesome. Like, it made me feel, like, really happy, like like a like real sunlight does. It was very interesting. And yeah, D-House, there's a lot of WoW going on right now, and you can pick one that you think is that you think is cool. Starting up fresh with retail makes sense, but yeah, they're pumping it out right now, man. I think that they're, like, they're back on WoW. It's like, for a while, they were, like, making new games, new IPs, and seeing if they could, like, make that the new big game for Blizzard, but WoW is like, nope. <laughs> the us WoW players, like, nope, WoW is still the best. You guys, and they're like, okay, cool. We're just gonna keep cranking out WoW content and, and like even doing even more now and like trying different stuff like Plunderstorm and the the pandemonium thing. I mean that's that's crazy, huh? That's crazy. Uh, the second zone is the Ringing Deeps, so you know the evocative of like mine picks, industry, mm -hmm. and so this is the heart of earthen industry. But mm. it's not all just you know lava and fire. It's uh, mixed with these beautiful caverns, awesome. cenotes with uh, light That's and awesome. water coming in, creating yeah. these uh, you know lush spaces for the players to enjoy. And then uh, we go to Howlafall. So cool. Howlafall is where we really uh, wanted to break expectations. I like this one. Uh, this is Arathi airships. Right, underground airships, right? The first thing you'd naturally <laughs> think of when you're going under the surface. How are they going to get around? Well, airships, of course. This is what I'm talking about, man. This is uh, this is why I'm excited to have the art, one of the art directors here for this, th because they deserve so much love. They always like nail it and exceed uh, with the art. In in wow, it's incredible. Of course. Of course. <laughs> And then our wow. final zone is Ashkahet. So this is the heart of the Nerubian Empire. This is where we'll finally be cool. able to see the Nerubians and all of their strength and glory, like with the height of their Ooh, civilization. Updated Nerubian models too. And, uh, we'll get into the details wow. of Alpha later, but everyone's journey is going to start awesome. in the Isle of Dorne. But I really can't wait until we get to Hallowfall in our testing. Yeah, I think the you know Tina mentioned that this crystal. It is such a striking visual element yeah. that dominates the zone. Imagine in this place wow. deep within the earth, a radiant crystal of light, and the way it, you know as it illuminates the surroundings that actually plays with the environment and some of the spawns and how All the, the plants world are like kind of like um, to it. I think when we they're like facing it, like moving space, towards it too. That's cool. We knew that one of the risks was that it could feel oppressive. That people didn't want to feel the sense of claustrophobia of you're always in caves. Mm -hmm. Hallowfall really from the outset was built to be a place where. Honestly, unless you fly all the way up to check out the ceiling above you, it doesn't feel underground. It feels yeah, like I don't like I don't like feeling claustrophobic. Welcoming area. This just, does not feel that way at, at first look. When we cool. arrive to the Isle of Dorne, what's the first thing we'll see? Well, so you're going to see something a bit different in Alpha from when the expansion goes live. There is an expansion intro experience that is not currently being tested. It's something that has some, you know, cool narrative elements that we want players to all experience together later in the year when Respect that. launches. But no players will it's spawn fine in in the Alpha on the Isle of Dorne, surrounded by some debris that will look pretty familiar and pretty distinctive, and really is the scars of an initial battle that huh. seems like it didn't end so well. Um, and the beginning of our journey, as, as, many, mm -hmm. as with many expansions, is a bit of a mystery, a bit of an investigation of, of arriving in a strange land, having this threat that we face, these visions, these whispers that heroes around Azeroth have been hearing in, in recent months, but trying to understand the nature of the threat we face, how we're going to stop it, and our journey begins Those on the great. doorstep of these ancient earthen people. Hey, just give me my hero, just give me my uh, Slayer hero spec and I'll handle where to it. Go next. They're going to become our I next got your ally back. race too, right? Once we are in their trust, look at our is there any Let's other NPCs trust, that we're going to be familiar with? Is that yeah, a bearded lady? Yeah, there's going to be uh, some characters that we haven't seen in World of Warcraft in a while that, that will like be, that. you know, part of this story. Uh, that's because of their, you know, dwarven heritage and, you know, Magni. He hears the radiant song. He brings with with his family more? members Great. along. Uh, Moira, who is 
leader of the Dark Iron Dwarves and heir to Iron Forge. Uh, she'll be here with her son, Dagran, sure yeah, we'll who is now a young adult. Uh, Dagran, the last time we saw him in game, he was this pretty generic looking dwarven baby. But now, uh, you know, the dark iron heritage is starting to show more in his appearance, along with his personality. So he has kind a bunch of, nerd, of these huh? scrolls and books, like really you know, showing that yeah. a very scholarly I'm nature. Nerd. I think one of the one of the fun aspects of just world building and narrative in WoW is we have this vast array right, of we'll, characters, we'll and champions and heroes and, and you know backup characters, and whenever we figure out where we're going, what the next natural location is, what the story elements are. I'm, the by the way, I'm fine with nerds. Is, who needs to be here? Who does it make play sense World of to have answer this living. call? Okay, and so want to step forward, just as when we were dealing with. Cool. You know the Green Dragon Flight or the Emerald Dream mm -hmm. or or the like. Okay, this is time for Malfurion and yeah, you want to, save, to yeah. step forward. Now that we're going to this ancestral homeland of the Earthen with this ancient connection to the Dwarven legacy of Azeroth, this is a time for our dwarves to take center stage. Great. All right. So let's talk about the eight new dungeons in Dwarven the Dwarven What are your guys' favorites or notable ones you want to talk about? Well, so one, let's see, one that's fun to talk about is actually probably the first dungeon the players are going to see in their journeys, and it's going to be tested early on in the alpha. This is the Rookery Dungeon in the Isle of Dorne. The Rookery okay. is the place where the Storm Griffins were raised and trained Ooh, by they, the Shadow Griffin Mode over, over the centuries. They get um, shadowified? And, and Griffins go hand in hand, and the Griffins have a legacy of them. Storm Riders that you know, we got to see a little sneak peek of. If you, you know, got the war within Heroic mm -hmm. Edition, you might have been flying around on that guy. There's yep. plenty more where that came from in the Isle of Dorne. Cool. So and this dungeon, of course, is not all peaceful. Uh, it's been overrun by a group of corrupted Earthen known as the Skarden. And we're going to be on just beginning to understand where they came from and what their nature is as we fight through it. They're kind of cool. With but the horns. one cool thing about this dungeon is that it's actually part of the main campaign as you play through Isle of Dorne. I like now, that. I know some people mm -hmm. are instantly saying, "Wait a minute! I don't like doing dungeons. I just like solo questing." That's no, terrible. I like it when the dungeons. Well, fortunately, have something to do with what's going on. Towards the end of Dragonflight, we introduced this feature called Follower Dungeons. <laughs> we're really happy to bring there that to the level up dungeons in War cool. Within. Cool right from the outset. That's actually so that awesome. You can go in solo with NPC allies as you play through the dungeon if that's what you prefer. That is so cool. I'm actually a big fan of uh, like content being made so that you can like, one, you can learn it in a comfortable environment where other people aren't gonna be giving you a hard time if you mess up. But two, so that you can do group content sort of solo. I don't mind doing stuff in a group, but Jenny, for example, is quite antisocial when she games. She doesn't want anybody talking to her, anybody messing with her, she doesn't want to group with anything. But players like her might really enjoy being able to do these campaign dungeons with a team of uh, AI followers, right? So it's like, it's cool for people who just want to do their own thing, don't really want to be bothered or bother other people to do content together. And it's also good for people who want to learn. So it's really cool. I like that. I'm like, so bad. I don't no, you're actually, no, you're not bad. You just think that, you just worry that you might be. She's not. She's just. She just likes to just do her own thing. I was a big. I was, again. I tell this story all the time. We went to uh, a, a summit. I don't think this is NDA. That we went to like a PvP summit, and one of the things that I suggested was, yeah, yeah, was AI for in PvP, so people could learn in bot games like you can in Heroes of the Storm, like you can, you can play against you know bots in like Hearthstone, any any kind of game, Starcraft, any kind of game. You can always learn against bots, but you can't do that in WoW. Really like PvP, but so you, but now they made the AI mode where you can go into like Arathi Basin and do the um the the bot stomp thing, the, the the comp stomp, and now they're doing it with this too. So I'm a big fan of that. That's awesome. It's very very cool. Or of course you can just queue up with regular with with friends or random group mates through the group finder. But what this lets us do is where appropriate we can really one. have the story flow directly through dungeons in a way that. We couldn't in the past in ways that at times was frankly awkward because sometimes mm -hmm. major villains die in dungeons. Dungeons are places of great importance in a zone. I am. But we couldn't really tie them directly into the questing because we didn't want to create an obstacle for players who really just prefer to keep playing solo. Tina, is there anything that you like? One of my favorites is in Hallowfall. So it's called the Priory of the Sacred Flame, and it's this Erethor monastery. So uh, one Duke? of the coolest parts is the final boss room. There's this giant uh, window that frames the crystal that is embedded in wow. the ceiling. That the the color scheme and like the the perspective reminds me of uh, 
Chrono Trigger when you're on trial. Now, I, this looks different, but that's what it reminds me of. Does anybody else get that vibe? Like, you, you guys know what I'm talking about? Remember play Chrono Trigger? And you, you go on trial for kidnapping the princess? That's what this looks like to me. It looks awesome, though. Yeah. Apollo fall and so I love you know the beauty of the room as well as just how it ties in with the cool. narrative of the story as a whole and another really cool one it's the city of threads so this one city is underneath the Nerubian city proper and so it's really uh, interesting to see the ancient civilization that the little, newer little civilization bugs. was built on top of and just to think about the layers of Nerubian those little spidey that, gremlins you know, is in this land is it Jeez. that the, the ancient civilization back in like Lich King? Even far before oh, that. Oh, it's even, even farther before that? Yeah, the Nerubians, I think, you know, we might think of them as monstrous or arachnid. They are one of the great powers, one of the great advanced civilizations of Azeroth, right up there with wow. the, you know, elves and trolls and the others that helped shape the course of, of the world's history. We've only mm. really seen hints of them going back. They're to still Shirath, grody, though. If you ran the Asjol Nerub or Ankehet dungeons, you could see, you know, their buildings off in the in the background. They're not grody just because they're but, ancient. You know, they were a civilization that at still its height grody. rivaled the High Elves and the Nightborn on the surface. That's insane. They were able to go toe to toe <laughs> with the Lich King's armies and win until the old gods and you know their forces on another flank eventually led to the Nerubians being overwhelmed. Mm. But really being able to explore what they're all about is one of the things we're most excited about when it comes to War Within. I don't want to spend one a lot of time in One of the things we're excited <laughs> to uh, bring is an arachnophobia filter, if you will. For all of you out there who uh, could never you know, go to that spider section in Nax, uh, you'll be able to turn on our arachnophobia filter that is and so all funny. Uh, spider beasts will turn into crabs. So very pumped about that. Wow. Yeah, it actually looks, it, it, it works That's way funny. better than you might think just hearing okay. that sentence. I can't wait for players to you know, be able to jump in, turn it on, and you know, hopefully feel more comfortable in parts of our world. You know, this is something that when we announced wow. the Nerubian-centric themes of War Within at BlizzCon, we heard trepidation from portions of our community who love WoW. Fair enough, hey. They weren't going to be able to experience it. Honestly, prior to that, it's something Fair we enough, heard dude. concerns about from within our own team, where there are you know, people who genuinely felt uncomfortable with these elements of the game that we were building together. And so we set oh, out hey. to try to find a solution that would still you know, preserve the fidelity of the game, but really make it more approachable, more accessible to everyone. So speaking of the Nerubians, Respect. once you reach level I, 80, we're gonna go that. to the new raid, Nerubo Palace. Uh, is there anything you wanna speak about that? Yeah, this raid yeah. is epic in so many ways. Uh, one of the coolest parts is there's this beautiful uh, show piece uh, that is just in front of the Queen's Palace. It wow. represents the Nerubian race and it just shows how highly Queen Ensrek thinks of her people and herself. This raid will get one of the sections wow. of the raid will get to check out her innermost sanctum. This is where, you know, only uh, VIPs for the Nerubians get to go and you really get to explore. Yeah, so they're going to make her a big crab of her palace. If you need to. And again, as we were just saying, like That's the funny. Nerubians, we need to remember they are an advanced race, very, you know, just this epic civilization. I think there's some funny. parallels probably to going back to the Nightborn in Suramar and like what going into that, so city far? And that palace felt like. We really want to show the sophistication here. It's, this is not a monstrous supervillain lair. This is, you know, a, a superpower of Azeroth mm. that we find ourselves, you know, facing off against. But yeah, the, the Queen Anserek encounter that Tina mentioned, she's going to be the end boss of sort of the initial season, the initial raid tier. Okay. Uh, the encounter team is hard at work on this one. I can't wait to see it tested later on in beta. Um, this is, you know, the, the whole room is really purpose built to showcase some vertical elements and, you know, just it's just an incredible set piece. So do you think that she's like shadow corrupted? That's why I have to fight her or like, to like prove our worth? I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, I guess you could probably crabify that, that main boss too. It's kind of crazy. But we want to, as always, integrate the environment wherever possible into our encounters. So you're facing off against both, you know, a very powerful magical user, but also someone who is arachnid in nature. Mm -hmm. And how do we kind of deliver parts of the fantasy of, you know, scaling a web while locked in combat against the queen? Those are the things that we're currently exploring. Can't wait to see cool. that up for testing. Does that mean we're gonna get tier sets again? Certainly. I think well, last time we tried taking them away, I recall <laughs> yeah. and pitchforks in the street. New tier means new tier sets. And these days, you know, unlike years and years. So what do you think? Is this DK or warrior? It's kind of frosty. So priest, DK or warrior. 
Drakthir, Hunter. Means new tier sets. And these days, you know, unlike Could years be Shaman, ago, probably Hunter. You only had, you had to raid in order to get the tier set. It's gotta set. be Hunter, right? Now, you can that get is Warrior? a wide array of activities, whether you're a raider, mythic plus set. That's pretty cool. Only thing that made me wonder if it was DK is just because of, the, uh, just of the, the color. But I guess the color will change. Oh, it could be Druid too. Yeah, actually. No, you're right. You guys probably know what it actually is. Could be, yeah, it could be Hunter, but I, I, I can see the Druid too for sure. Yeah, that looks cool. This looks very cool. Now you can get them from a wide array of activities, yeah. whether you're a Raider, Mythic Plus player, yeah, skulls, yeah. or an Outdoor World player, which includes... They got them on WoW? Yeah, but I'm trying to have fun and just watch this and speculate. You guys are always like, you guys are all got the data mining on there. No room for speculation when you already know everything, huh? Now, Delves. Ah, you guys are more fun. Delves. Let's, get, let's start talking about Delves. Yeah, I mean, Delves are, are one of the major new nerds. features in War Within. You, got, you guys are like this little, this little dwarf guy back here. This is you right here. Where, where, where are we in the video? Minutes. This guy's you. Actually, Bajira, it's we already know what they are. Actually, sir, that's a druid, not a hunter. <laughs> Death knights usually have skulls. I'll have you know, silly Bajira. Don't you look at Wowhead data mining? Huh? <laughs> that's you guys. War within, and I think we're really excited to offer a, a more structured, progression-oriented extension of the outdoor world gameplay that we know is the favorite of so many of our players. And you know, delves are these seamless experiences integrated into all of our zones. Okay. Where you can have these localized, varied adventures alongside in the first season, Brand Bronzebeard, either on your own or with friends. Um, and finally, you know, get a shot at some endgame epic rewards just through an extension of the outdoor world ecosystem. Now we've So yeah, you guys think delves are like it sounds like it's actually gonna give you loot. How do we feel about that? I, again, I like solo content that's like challenging and, and potentially even rewarding. Like, that's cool. But it sounds like they're actually going to be giving you strong stuff. Well, Torghast didn't give you loot, right? Like, you had to do Torghast for your legendary and stuff, but this sounds like it's actually going to give you loot. You'll be able to get it from the Great Vault, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. super exciting. So one of our goals with mm -hmm. building Delves was we really wanted the player to just feel like they adventured, came across a place and could just, you know, go in and see what's inside. When mm -hmm. you walk up to the Delve, there's this, you know, dark misty door and you click on there's gonna be some PvP outside of them delves, don't you think? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> One of the things they've missed about this this nice little thing is that all the skeletons all over the place here at the bottom. Side. When you walk up to the delve, there's this you know dark misty door, That's and you what you're click missing. on it, and then it just disappears, and you just walk into your own personal delve instance. So very excited about that. I mean, players are gonna see have that first experience on the Isle of Dorn early in the alpha. Uh, Yo, Mr. Games, so thanks for the 124, man. Big flex of the prime too. Appreciate it, man. People who are doing delves on PvP. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. If delves are cool, I bet everybody would do them, right? The first delve you're likely to encounter is Earthcrawl Mines. You're going to encounter your good friend Bran Bronzebeard outside an ancient earthen mine that has been overrun with Nerubians who okay. are borrowing up from the depths. Rebel are those like little you health pickups you can get if you're low on health? It's like kind of like Diablo. Or as a damage dealer to help support like. you and you'll venture in and have your very first delve experience. Um, you'll be able to choose whether you want to do it on tier one or tier two difficulty. Tier one is kind of the default. This is for everyone experience. Tier two is for those who want to opt into a bit more of a challenge we'll be because that's two. what they enjoy. Uh, there will be higher tiers that can be unlocked at max level as part of the end game and that's seasonal progression. And we really just can't wait to get player feedback from the outset, really all through alpha on this new system, on you know how it is or isn't working for you and whether we can you know, really meet everyone's expectations from people who just want okay. a casual romp as an extension of their outdoor world experience to those who want a solo progression challenge that they can really strive to overcome. Um, feedback is gonna really help shape how this evolves, but we're so excited about Delves as a central part of War Within. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited that we're gonna be able to just jump in and get our, like go solo with Bran, or you can have friends, but also just get rewards in that way, especially the tier sets with the catalyst. Exactly. And then that really cool mechanical mount. <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is gonna kind of be an introduction to the, sort of the Delve's end game. As you hit max level, as you hit 80, and start to get a sense of the Delve's ecosystem, right at the start of that, we're gonna give you this epic customizable mount, kind of the, the successor to the customizable drakes you had in Dragon Isles, where you'll be able to, through doing Delve's, earn a variety of different customizations and attachments that you can mix and match to really create your own personalized flying mount. Okay. So does this mechanical mount have dynamic flying? 
this is one of the big questions we had moving <laughs> on from Dragonflight. We had the question of like, well, okay, uh, dragon riding is amazing. Mm -hmm. We're in, we can't get rid of this. Mm -mm. That's why it's got like kind of like a glider on top, of right? Hundreds of mounts that we already have. In so it works like that, I guess. And how, from a design perspective, how do we navigate a world where some mounts can fly in this awesome way and others can only do the old quote unquote static flight? Uh, fortunately, I think our art team was able to work out an amazing solution for us. Yeah, we were very excited to be again. able to make pretty much all mounts be able to dynamically fly. So even Nimron's head in, we figured it out. <laughs> we made it work. So I'm really excited to see Nimron's head going like super oh, fast. Wow. <laughs> Another feature coming in the War Within that I'm really excited about. Well, that's how I, I I compare it to like a helicopter flying versus a paper airplane and. That thing is literally a helicopter, but I guess they figured it out. Fair enough. You need a dirigible skin. I, I, I don't know, man. They'll figure something out. Looks pretty funny, though. I'm not like a big um, like mechanical mount kind of guy, but it could be kind of fun, huh? As well as a lot of other people is Warbands. Yeah, Warbands, I mean, again, I think as I summarized it at BlizzCon, it's just account-wide everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, everything. yeah. Uh, it, this, you know, players increasingly play multiple characters. And this is something we've heard loud and clear that you know the game needs to be more alt friendly. The players want to be able to choose where they spend their time across their different characters instead of feeling like they have to reprogress everything individually. Yeah. And so yeah, the Warband is just it is your account in its entirety. It is your collection of champions, whether they're horde or alliance, regardless of what realm they're on, they're all part of the same warband, which gives access to various shared progression systems. And then you get to see all of your favorites on, that's cool. uh, you know, one screen together. But that's like Lost Ark for me. I, I actually thought that was kind of cool in Lost Ark. Whenever you logged in, you could see all your all your guys just like you know chilling. That was kind of cool. Oh uh, man, how long do you guys think it's gonna take for me to just fill up my freaking warband storage too? Oh my gosh. There. So in our new UI, we'll have warbands, and you'll be able to be like you know move four up into that space and see them all hanging out around a campfire. Is that that's on the cool. character select screen? Yeah, the character select oh, screen. Oh, cool. yeah. That's going to be totally different than what we're used to logging in. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. You'll, you'll know, like, this is a completely different world. It's a completely different welcome into World of Warcraft. Um, nice. What we showed off at BlizzCon was just actually a UI mock up, but we're excited to see people react to the real thing. And really, that's Badge Queequee and Badge Thor the chilling. These are a foundation. Nice. This is a system that we want to build the next generations of World of Warcraft on. Now, in 2004, cool. WoW launched right. with everything character-based. In 2024, WoW is going to shift to everything being account-based. And we can't wait to hear feedback about what other areas we can expand upon here. Yeah, lost and that's going to shape not just War Within, but later updates and expansions. And we're just, you know, just excited about this platform that better reflects the way our players are looking to play World of Warcraft today. Cool. You can't forget about PvP. Nice. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so we have a new battleground called the Deep Hall. This oh. one is earthen themed. It's a bit of a mashup RBG. between uh, Silver Shard Mines and Arathi Basin. So you know, hold some points, push some carts. Uh, we're really excited to see how players uh, navigate around this one. Oh, yeah, and in terms of how players- Really excited to see how players ignore the objective in this one. That's what I'm thinking. I, I don't think they're removing RBGs, bro. I don't think so. Yeah, how, how are you gonna ignore the objective on this one? are interacting with it um there is an overhaul to our rated battleground system oh here we go is coming maybe maybe uh, people on. who've been paying attention over the course maybe. of dragonflight have checked out our uh battleground blitz our kind of brawl that was testing out a 8v8 solo queue rated battleground format we're happy to move to that as a default for how rated battlegrounds are going to work going forward i think we're really excited to make that battleground experience that personally i've always felt is the best part of WoW PvP, that larger scale, more cooperative, objective-based, um, you know, collaborative, competitive setting, as opposed to the deathmatch style in Arena, so, to make that more accessible to everyone who, you know, loves Battlegrounds, loves PvP. Um, we know, you know, it's a bit overdue, honestly, us mm -hmm. adding a new Battleground map into the rotation, and we're excited to do more of this going forward. We're excited to have a new framework that can make Battlegrounds more central to the end game rewarding part of PvP. And yeah, this is just you know, the beginning of a new chapter. Another. Okay, so you guys were asking me, are they getting rid of Battlegrounds? And I was like, no, I don't think so. That's what you're talking about, right? I don't think they're getting rid of the pre-made rated Battleground bracket. I think they're just saying that we're making solo queue rated Battlegrounds. And I think they accurately expect for that to be the main thing that people do when they're trying to do rated Battlegrounds. 
Yeah, I don't I don't think they're taking away battlegrounds. I think that when you have a solo queue option, that's going to be what most people do. We can we can listen to it again. I don't think they're taking out pre-made rated battlegrounds. That's my interpretation. It's kind of like like solo shuffle, right? It's like they're not they're not taking out pre-made arenas. It's just like it's easy to just just press a button and queue up, right? Let's let's listen to it again. Coming with War Within. Uh, people who've been paying attention over the course of Dragonflight have checked out our uh, Battleground Blitz, our kind of brawl that was testing out a 8v8 solo queue rated Battleground format. We're happy to move to that as a default for how rated Battlegrounds are going to work going forward. I think we're really excited to make that Battleground... That, so moving forward to that being the default doesn't mean that it's the only way that rated Battlegrounds take place. Maybe. I think they are replacing, is what he said, right? He did, I don't know if he said replacing, them, but we'll have to get more information on that. We'll, 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 it would be... I think the rated Battleground bracket is competitive enough and active enough that they wouldn't take it out like fives, right? Yeah. I, I think that it'll... Yeah, I think default doesn't mean only. We can listen to whatever else he says. Pretty sure, pretty sure that it, it's not taking out pre-made rated Battlegrounds. I think that is, this is just kind of like the main way that he envisions people doing rated battlegrounds now. Right now, you have to go to the group finder, find a team, apply to a bunch, see who accepts you, or make your own, fill fill a group, and all that. It, it, but instead, it's just gonna be like this is the default way we expect people to do rated battlegrounds now, right? That's that's how I interpret that, but could be wrong. Experience that personally I've always felt is the best part of WoW PvP that larger scale, more cooperative, objective-based, um, we'll you know, collaborative, competitive setting, as opposed to the deathmatch style in Arena, so, to make that more accessible to everyone who you know loves Battlegrounds, loves PvP. Um, we know, you know it's a bit overdue, honestly, us mm -hmm. adding a new Battleground map into the rotation, and we're excited to do more of this going forward. We're excited to have a new framework that can make Battlegrounds more central to the end game rewarding part of PvP. And yeah, this is just you know, the beginning of a new chapter. Another yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to be the only way to do rated battlegrounds. I also don't think queues will be as long. One, you get more DPS. I think more DPS per healer, or, or is, is it maybe actually not? I, I think you need two healers for each team, so maybe not. But you can queue with a healer. Remember that, right? Four DPS per healer, which is, I guess, is that better than it was before? Better than three DPS per healer? Yeah, I guess it's better. Or the same, maybe. Or is it? Why? Like, I don't know, you have to be really, I don't, I, you have to be really careful doing math on stream. But anyway, I think it's actually maybe a little bit, like, not as good for, for, for DPS per healer, but you can queue with a healer as, like, duo queue. I think this will be better. Queue up RBG sounds much better than the original way. You talk about this, solo queue? Yeah, yeah, just, you just press the button, put me in a, in a matchmaking thing for a, a RBG, yeah. I think so too. I think it'll be good. I think I think this will damage the normal RBG bracket. I feel like high-rated teams will still want to like match up and like do pre-made, but I think kind of people who are not real high-rated will just want to queue up. And same thing with solo shuffle. Like I think solo shuffle has had a negative impact on on high-rated arena because lower-rated people don't do pre-made arenas as much, which which just causes the whole ladder to not inflate as much. So, um. But I think it, it could be overall better for the game for people to just be able to queue up and play if the queues aren't crazy long, which is the main issue with Solo Shuffle in my experience, in my opinion. But what if you like to queue with multiple friends? You probably still will maybe want to make an RBG team, like a, like a pre-made team. But yeah, that's very interesting. I don't, it, it's not my interpretation that it, the RBGs pre-made are going away. It's just like they envision this will be like the main thing. This will be the main way people do RBGs, I guess. Right? We'll see. Another feature in the War Within is hero talents. We've been having a lot of articles talking about them. What are some of yeah, the other things Slayer. that we can expect with the hero talents coming forward? Well, I can say there's going to be no more blogs and articles releasing hero talents because they'll be there for you to jump in and play. And I think right. that's you know the, mo the most exciting thing. We're so grateful to the community for all of Great. the feedback and discussion in recent months, going back to the first blog in December. This really helped us shape this central feature of how people's class gameplay is going to evolve. Um, you're going to see hero talents that you haven't yet seen for the trees that we haven't discussed previously. Okay. And for many of the, the ones that we ones. have released, you'll log in and see changes that are directly shaped by your feedback, uh, by what we heard loud and clear in some cases about what, what was heck? and wasn't exciting. 
Um, we, we've committed to have as many of these playable right from the outset as possible. We will have 100% of the hero Drifting. count trees available dun, and dun, playable dun, dun, not dun, long dun, into dun. alpha. And then the rest of the journey is going to be about iteration, tuning, and really just Pop dialing it, it all in to make the polished experience that everyone is excited about. So what are we doing with professions in the War cool. Within? Uh, I think when we really overhauled professions in Dragonflight, we saw that as, as a kind of a permanent shift in how professions were going to work going forward. Kind of so you can expect you know, new recipes, different enchants, but the same fundamental sort of progression and structure to professions that you saw in Dragonflight. One big piece of feedback that we heard throughout Dragonflight, though, was a bit of frustration with the work order system from crafters who yeah. were just looking to complete quests, looking to skill up, but found themselves competing and often racing to grab work orders w with their fellow crafters. Um, so what we're excited to offer is a baseline availability of basically NPC crafting orders. Uh, so it could be you know Earthen in Isle of Dorne who need a hammer made or need a helmet made and they're constantly putting their offer their work orders up onto the onto the market so that there's always something for you to grab the player ones will still be more lucrative but there should always be that baseline availability if you just want to skill up you just want to practice your trade skill and there's also some cool potential for narrative tie-ins the ability to have quests that now can point you towards that system because we can count on it always being there thank so you so with dragonfly cash and money i wonder is that is that a thing is that a possibility Profession overhaul. There was also a UI overhaul. Is there anything we're going to see with the War Within? Yeah, so the UI overhaul, it's basically a continued improvement that we want to make over time. One of the things that I'm very excited about is the uh, quest bang over, uh, overhaul. So we're going to have a bunch of new icons that will make uh, what type of quest it is much more clear. One of the new ones that you'll see is one that's like we consider an important one. These aren't campaign, but they're pretty important to your character. For instance, some uh, that must do ones for your profession or ones where you're going to unlock the revival catalyst. Yeah, I think as we've leaned more and more into mm, outdoor okay. world gameplay and varied gameplay there, different types of public events mm. over the course of Dragonflight, Honestly, we reached a point about halfway through Dragonflight where we just took a look at our map and kind of recoiled in horror at the number of different icons that were there. And it was just a kind of icon soup situation yeah. that made us say, like, it's kind of this point we've advanced. Yeah, those past purple quests freak me out. Oh, you I don't just know what have some daily quests or world quests here. Whatever. We need a clearer visual language. And so, really excited to just evolve that central interface that players use to log in and see what there is to do in WoW on a given day. So that covers the war within, cool. and the alpha is starting extremely wow. soon. Pretty much working on getting it stood up <laughs> as we speak, as we sit here right now. And yeah, so the way this is going to work date, is huh? pretty similar to the Dragonflight alpha for those who, who followed that, where really each week, each new build that we release, we're focusing on a different piece of War Within yeah. to concentrate player feedback and our they attention to just really get all that feedback in and maximize the quality. So we're going to start off zone by zone, level band by level band. This first week is going to be the Isle of Dorne, level 70 to 73 or so, the dungeon and delves there, as well as universal systems like Hero Talents. With successive cool. alpha builds, we'll move on to other zones, other portions of War Within, um, inviting more waves of people. If you haven't gone to the website to opt in yet, that's a great reminder <laughs> to do so. Um, we, you know, really pick from. Really, true, there's no sure secret to it. We're just randomly pulling lots of folks in and hope to get by the end of this countless people into our testing. Cool. Um, once we've gotten through all of those rounds of focus testing, we'll move into our beta phase which really is an end-to-end -end holistic test of War Within wow. from 70 all the way to 80 and the end game and beyond. And throughout, you know, feedback, bug reports, suggestions, okay. all of this is instrumental mm -hmm. to helping turn what we have now into the finished product that we want to be the best it possibly can be for all of our players later this year. All right. Thank you so much for joining me for The War Within. And thank you for joining us for this. Really, this is one of the most exciting times Good job, ever guys. for the development team, when we get to pull back the curtain and welcome you all into this world that we've been building in the last few years. So can't wait to see you in the alpha, and can't wait to hear all of your feedback. All right. Really looking forward to everyone checking out what we built. Thank you so much. See you guys in the alpha. Bye-bye. Great job. Great job. That was cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks good to me. I, I liked what I saw. I like this. I liked this stuff. This, these looks at like the the zones looked really cool. Very excited for hero talents. Solo queue RBG does sound really cool. I think that is a natural choice 
for uh for pvp stuff i think solo queue arena has been good but the queues are a little rough and it does make the other thing is like solo shuffle is pretty different than threes and it does kind of pull people away from arena but the the benefit is people can just log in and press a button and get in queue and eventually get in a game but if you can queue for solo shuffle and solo rbg at the same time that could sort of cut down on the queue feeling a little bit because maybe even if you're in like a 20, 30 minute, 40 minute queue for one of them, maybe hopefully you only wait like 10 or 20 minutes, which is still a long freaking time. But maybe to, maybe it'd be like a 10 minute wait, right? Because let's say, let's say you wait a long queue for the first one, right? You get in a shuffle. The shuffle takes 20 minutes. Then when you come out of the shuffle, you've been in queue for 30 minutes for the RBG, you queue up your shuffle again, you get into the RBG. The RBGs don't take that long. Like the solo, like the uh, the brawls, like they're pretty fast on purpose. So that one takes like 15 minutes. So you come out of that, maybe wait another 15 minutes to get your next game. But a solo shuffle, it's like solo queue arena. So you get matched up with uh, a lobby of two healers and four DPS and you just, you play every version of the comps that you can. So you play with the same healer. Each healer you play with three times, each DPS you play with twice. And then whoever has like, you know, then you get um, rating determined by your MMR, the lobby's MMR, and how many games you win. Happy for Ian, he's come a long way. Yeah, he's been kicking butt for a while, huh? Uh, the solo queues are rough because people don't play healer as much. That's like the, the main reason. But yeah, I mean, like, if all there was available is retail, then there'd be more population playing retail. But I think probably what, they, what they're seeing is that when they have multiple versions of WoW, they can rotate those versions of WoW and have the WoW community constantly playing different versions of wow or they can have versions of wow that people want to play even if they don't want to play every version of wow right like some people only want to play classic some people only want to play uh modern wow or whatever so it kind of lets them keep the keep it going i think one of the things they're also seeing is that wow is just still a powerhouse and they can experiment with different versions of the game that aren't even classic or modern while they can do like the plunderstorm thing they can do the pandemonium thing too right so they have a lot of uh, room to experiment then WoW continues to kick butt, and if all these different versions of WoW mean that people pay their WoW sub, that's good for the game too, right? It's good for them. Wish they get the queue times below five minutes, that'll ever happen. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. The RB, the, the, the solo queue RBG, I think, could easily become the most popular version of WoW, just because, or a popular version of, like, rated PvP in WoW, because there's, like, not a big barrier to entry. It's a battleground, so the, the basically the more casual the more likely it is to succeed in some ways, right? So there is still rating associated with it, but I think it'll be successful. I think all the hero talents will be out, at least in the alpha. Have they got over them yet? Yeah, accessibility makes it easy. You know. That's cool though. Looks good. I'm liking it. I'm excited for the war within. I, I, I do tend to be more of like a modern WoW enjoyer than all the different classic variations and stuff. And just personally, like where I am in my gaming life, it is nice to be able to just like, have certain content to play solo because my schedule is a little tight and it's also not ideal for like the late night arenas and it's like early in the day there's not that many people on i don't like waiting for solo shuffle cues just it just takes too long there's definitely a lot of things that i think will be good for me and where i'm at in my gaming life because i love wow but there are some elements of wow that makes it a little bit hard to interact with just due to my schedule and stuff so all good though very cool i think they added set of like a solo shuffle mount for both arena and rbg what you need is healers you need more healers to play solo shuffle if if we had twice as many healers playing solo shuffle the queues would be super fast or at least faster much faster i mean you get a title for a solo shuffle i mean a mount could be fine sure but you, yeah you, what 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 you need is more healers to play the game so you need to incentivize healers in particular some way healing healing is like healing in pvp is like the hardest thing you can do in the game and healing in solo shuffle in particular is probably especially tough because there's deep dampening don't really communicate with your teammates so and people it's solo shuffle so anybody can play and it's likely that people who are bad will do bad things and then blame the healer so it's like even less fun as a healer to like have people not use cooldowns and then rage the healer for not healing them or like not stopping any kind of cc and not having any kind of awareness about what's going on and then just blaming the healer because they died right so yeah i think healing solo shuffle is probably not like the most fun thing in the game but it's not like something that those would necessarily like fix easily i feel like but i do think that uh rated bgs will be kind of interesting the rated bgs are like i don't know like they're fun but 
they, except for like the very, very high level, aren't played at like a very, very high level. You know what I mean? Yeah, BGs are different. I think it'll be cool. If you made RBGs casual, wouldn't BGs be irrelevant? Not everybody wants to do rated content, but yeah, I mean, I think that whenever you put in something like uh, solo queue RBG, it's going to make pre-made RBGs less popular. It's going to make regular Battlegrounds less popular. It could it could be a net positive for the game. Because doing rated PP solo with AI may affect, for example, will these solo players count rating and then everyone play with AI? Nobody's doing rated content with AI right now. I feel like if you if you had AI involved in a, battle, in a PvP environment, Environment, that's strictly for learning, right? Like the comp stomp brawl is kind of for fun, but it also gives you an opportunity to go in there and just like be in a Rothy Basin against AI. So like there's not a lot of being scared to PvP because you're just fighting against bots anyway. But you're still getting in the environment and seeing what it's like to attack a, something that looks like a player, have player abilities used on you rather than PvE abilities, right? But yeah, same thing for, for Solo Shuffle. Solo Shuffle absolutely hurt the rated PvP brackets, but it's like maybe still good for the game to have it because people then can get into PvP without having to find teammates, right? So, it's tricky, but cool. Orwithin's looking good, definitely. I'm excited for it. Hopefully the alpha is soon.